Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChassTrading.com and this is a market recap for Friday, June 23rd, 2017. So stocks gap to fresh all-time highs on Monday, but basically were in a corrective pattern throughout the week. Uh, QQQ outperformed S&P 500 and it was driven, I think, by biotech and semiconductors. And I think solar stocks also helped and uh, TAN could become a, a recipient of some of the speculative money in the near term. Looks really strong. Uh, industrials, healthcare, real estate outperform, staples, utilities, financial, cyclicals could be setting up for a bounce. And we'll look a little bit more detail at the cyclical sector as XRT hit 52 week lows. Junk bonds reversed higher, so this is good news, I think. Uh, investment grade bonds did hit fresh highs for the move and treasuries actually outperformed stocks for the week so this is kind of interesting divergence but then we'll look at the dollar and it's really having a hard time and as it, as it retests November lows uh, and of course gold is uh, finding support because I think dollar uh, is helping gold and we'll look at oil, which lost another 4 plus percent for the week, and it printed a couple of inside days, so we'll look at that. XLE is approaching 52-week lows, and we'll look at some of the correlations between various stock funds. And natural gas is attempting to stabilize following last week's drop. S&P 500 ETF SPY. So notice here we have a, a Monday, we had a gap up, and fresh all-time highs, close at fresh all-time highs. Um, normal pullback towards the end of the week, uh, close the gap and you know normal consolidation. So very bullish chart. Um, you know I, I really can't think of anything negative about this chart except for maybe we're somewhat overextended after this move higher from May lows. Uh, but again, overextended is a good thing because it shows buying pressure. Um, one thing that would make me or well, help me sleep at night better if we see a fresh all-time high in advanced decline volume. So far, we did see fresh all-time high in advanced decline line uh, very recently, but not in advanced decline volume. So maybe it is driven by less volume. Um, so it's a little bit of a divergence and I'm not sure how much to worry about it. This could be a temporary underperformance or it could be a sign of something bigger. Um, I think the advanced decline line hitting fresh highs um, is a good sign. If both of them were underperforming, I would be more worried. But volume, you know, it, it, we, we may catch up in the near term. Another uh, look at the same uh, S&P 500. Uh, notice that we are hitting fresh highs and uh, up. You know we can see a clear up drift in the index, but the bullish percent index and the uh, percentage of stocks above the 200-day has been trending somewhat lower. Um, how much to worry about? It? Most likely not. Not a lot. Uh, these are kind of like my tertiary indicators and I do pay attention to them but I think they're, uh, they're be, they become more worrisome when they reach some sort of an extreme so let's say maybe below 30 percent and I would be somewhat worried right now we're in absolute terms around you know 70 73 percent so in other words over 70 percent of S&P 500 stocks are above their 200 day moving average, exponential moving average. So not a, you know, not a big deal uh, as far as um, a somewhat smaller uh, number than let's say in March, you know, we had 85% of stocks and now we're at 73. Again, I would don't think I would start worrying about this two indicators until we get to like 30. RSI also same thing. We see a slight divergence here. Um, Momentum divergences, I, I basically ignore. Uh, they are there for educational purposes, basically. Yes, here in uh, February and yes, here in December, we have become overbought. For example, this is RSI. 
Um, this just means that the rate of advance over that particular time period was steeper than it is now. But notice that we're still advancing and we're moving higher. If, if we were moving sideways or down, um, significantly down, then it will be a different story. And yes, we are not becoming overbought. We are at um, higher levels for S&P, but RSI, there seems to be a divergence here. I don't know how much to worry about it. In fact, I worry very little about it because um, those divergences are quite common and most of the time um, the, I ignore them. Here is a weekly time frame and here what I wanted to show a couple of uh, triangle consolidations, this S&P 500. Notice that here in the beginning of 2017 we had a uh, two inside weeks in a row, in other words one week uh, range is within the previous week's range. Notice we had two of those and so this could be thought as a triangle consolidation with a breakout um, in, the two th in the beginning of, in January 2017 and a fresh uh, move to all-time highs. Then we had a pullback and another uh, triangle consolidation here and move to fresh all-time highs. Now we actually just had another fresh um, well, we had a fresh all-time high, but we had a inside week here, uh, previous week, and it was inside uh, a week before that range. So I'm going to mark this on the chart. So right now, it looks like we're attempting to uh, break out another triangle consolidation and a breakout. Here's QQQ in a daily time frame. So a couple of weeks ago, I pointed out uh, this very large volume on this very large red candlestick and I said that most likely um, the bottom has already been put in and so far it seems as if that has been true uh, because it looks like we have uh, these two very large uh, volumes here and looks like the bottom uh, you know the bottom pattern has already been put in here and, and now we're moving higher. So uh, it's possible that, again, that the bottom has already been put in. QQQ is, you know, very aggressive, and high beta dominated stocks. Um, and we'll get to them in a few seconds. But here what I wanted to show uh, on QQQ, notice where the bottoming pattern took place. It took place exactly on S1. So I do use uh, uh, pivot points and uh, they are quite useful actually especially if you are not sure of where to take money off the table for example here at R1 or if you are not sure where to put your stop um, then you can look at pivot points and simply put your stops below them or put your uh, targets uh, around them And here's, um, I think, one of the reasons why QQQ had a big drop. Semiconductors, ETF, XSD. You can also look at SMH, and let me just show it to you. Um, actually, quite similar pattern. But SMH is, you know, dominated by large, several large cap stocks. For example, Taiwan Semiconductors, Semiconductor, but XSD is a more diversified ETF, albeit, unfortunately, less volume. Uh, is traded on this one, uh, but it's a good for representation purposes. And actually, we do trade it at messagestrading.com, and um, you know we have a position um, that was recently opened actually in XSD. So similar pattern to QQQ, and looks like the bottoming pattern has already been put in, and now we're moving higher. Now this could also be like a rising wedge. So you know we have a big drop, and now we have a rising wedge. Um, rising wages are bearish uh, continuation patterns, especially if the security is bearish. Now, clearly XSD is bullish because these are all-time highs. So, uh, this rising wage, um, for example, you can see that we had similar situation here. We had a drop, a rising wedge, and then we broke this rising wedge uh, in April. But the drop was not that significant. Yes, we broke the rising wedge and we moved lower, but 
you know, the selling was muted and eventually the support was found here in mid-April and we rallied very hard to fresh highs. So it's possible we will get something along the same lines. Maybe we will get a rising wage break. In that case, maybe we'll move to at least, you know, retest um, May um, low at $60.12, or the uh, mid-May low. Another very strong sector, XBI, biotech. Look at this move, it just took off. Um, 52 week highs, so very strong move. Now, again, uh, notice this SCTR, stock shares technical rank. Notice that it is at 99% right now, so it's in the very top of the performance stocks, uh, performance um, ETFs. Um, a little bit overextended uh, after this move, but uh, again, I think if we do get a pullback, you sh well, we at MasterChatsTrading.com will be looking for a buying opportunity within a uh, pullback. Uh, so far, obviously, it has not occurred, but we will look for it. Another ETF, and this is 10 solar. Uh, now, this is a monthly chart going back to 2014 and here what I wanted to show is that uh, 10 came down to all-time lows here last November and then finally looks like we're bottoming and moving higher. Um, if indeed we're now in a bull market for 10 and I put a 12-month channel here just to show um, where the 12 month or, or 52 week lows basically are uh, located and 52 week highs are not that far off they're you know not you know just quite close actually only a couple of dollars away and this is a very volatile ETF so if this is indeed a new bull market in 10 in solar stocks we could move substantially higher I mean we're at $20 right now we could move easily to $40, uh, possibly higher. So let, let me go back to a daily chart and I wanted to show you what I mean here. So uh, me personally, I am long uh, 10 uh, and I bought somewhere, uh, don't remember exactly where, but somewhere between March and May, somewhere around here. I bought it and I am already at third target. And I'll show you this uh, trade once I close it out. Uh, but important thing is here the relative strength of this ETF currently. Notice that we uh, 10 has moved to 93. So SCTR, the structure's technical rank, um, shows that there is now speculative money uh, uh, moving into 10. And this is good news because speculative money, well, it's that, just that, it's speculative. So we, we may get, a, again, a, a, I'll be looking for a pullback and maybe um, another surge higher. Uh, and then we do trade at MasterChessTrain.com. Um, New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, uh, all-time highs, uh, you know, very bullish chart again. Uh, here what I wanted to point out again uh, is that we, we have a advanced decline volume line did hit fresh all-time highs. Or the advanced decline line, advanced decline issues hit threshold time highs, but advanced decline volume did not. So that's one one of my concerns. One of my few concerns for the stock market right now is that the advanced decline volume and volume is a little bit on the low side. Hopefully, we'll finally um, move higher and put this problem to rest. Moving on to the various uh, sector funds. So here is industrials, uh, also fresh all-time highs, and it is confirmed by advanced decline lines. So very strong move. One of the strongest sectors, industrials, uh, right now. We pulled back a little bit, but uh, you know, I think we could easily continue higher. Uh, healthcare, of course, is quite a bit of in uh, quite a quite a bit of biotech stocks but healthcare has been quietly kind of outperforming the rest of the market and you know this spike here back in march questionable but then we moved higher and we just continue higher this move is a little bit like a parabolic kind of move so i think we will um 
definitely get a sort of a pause of some sort. Maybe a sideways consolidation, maybe even a pullback. But notice that once decline lines are confirming this move higher, so this is good news. Also, real estate is uh, doing quite well. Uh, IYR, notice I pointed out this hammer and we just rallied from there uh, more or less straight higher. Um, uh, we are also long uh, IYR at messageaustrain.com and this is, uh, we're, not we're not yet approaching fresh highs, uh, but we're not that far off. Uh, this is all-time highs here at 83 bucks, we're at uh, as high as 81.50, so we're not that far off from fresh all-time highs. Uh, XLP, uh, consumer staples, you know, very strong move. This was one of the first sectors to break out to fresh highs. Now we're pulling back. This is a normal correction. Uh, if anything, I think this could be a, uh, a buying opportunity uh, sometime in the not so distant future. We will also trade this at Massachusetts Trading. XLU utilities, uh, myself, I have a position open since November. Uh, it's already off the chart here. So, very strong move. Um, and, and it just keeps going. So, you know, there is no, like, for example, I have a position open, there's absolutely no point closing it if it just keeps going. Um, you know, again, also confirming fresh all time highs uh, by the advanced decline lines. Financials, this one worries me a little bit, uh, especially back here in May. And it looks like we successfully have retested this um, potential head and shoulder mass. If we broke below, uh, let's say, 2268, uh, that could be a real trouble for XLF. But we did hold on and we rallied. So this is, uh, this is important. Now we're pulling back and I think, um, I think we will find support. I don't see a big problem with this chart. I think somewhere around the 50-day moving average, maybe below it, the support will be found. I could be completely wrong, by the way, and uh, we could actually see a continuation lower. But uh, odds are, uh, in my opinion, favoring uh, the bulls here. Here's XLY, and it's kind of interesting. You can see that this is the first time since actually November that uh, XLY closed below the 50-day moving average. And notice that before 50-day moving average um, kept the uptrend alive. Now, this is still an uptrend in security, and uh, these are all-time highs. Um, but, you know, there is some selling present, and I wanted to know where the selling is coming from, so I looked at some of the top components here for XLY. Um, and so I put them in a separate chart. Here's a bunch of uh, XL, XLY components. Amazon is doing quite well, fresh all-time highs. Uh, charter communication, pretty much pretty, pretty much same thing, kind of moving slightly lower, but not that significant. Comcast, now this one is a little bit under pressure last week. Uh, notice this big red candlestick. Um, still you know, in decent, decent uh, uptrend in security. I don't see a big problem with this one. Here's Disney, and notice that how how, how steeply it sold off over the past uh, few weeks. But again, I think we're ready to uh, go higher for Disney, if anything. Uh, Home Depot, another retail stock, not a very good candle. McDonald's at all time highs. Uh, Nike under pressure, and these are all. 52 week lows, by the way. So it's still under pressure. I don't think it has bottomed. Um, although maybe maybe we're bottoming because it's a very bullish looking candle. Priceline also doing quite well. Uh, Starbucks, maybe one of the reasons why the XLY is kind of pulling back. Uh, but also uptrend in security. I don't see a big problem with it. And Time Warner, fresh all time high. So overall, um, out of the major uh, major XLY components, uh, not that big of a deal. So we, I, need, I needed to look deeper, and I, and I found that uh, XRT, the retail diversified retail ETF, uh, hit 52-week lows. So 
there is a lot of retail stocks in XLY and you know clearly uh, they are weighing on the ETF. So 52 week lows is not a good sign. Um, so we can look at a longer term picture and here is the weekly uh, chart going back a couple of years. So uh, we just hit fresh you know 52 week lows and usually um, when the security hits fresh lows it continues lower. So there is now a greater possibility of retail continuing lower uh, than uh, bottoming here. But overall, again, I think stocks overall generally are in an uptrend and I would be uh, definitely not looking to short them anytime soon. Right, let's move on to the bond universe. Here's junk bonds on a daily time frame. Uh, this kind of worried me a little bit because we hit fresh all-time highs a couple of weeks ago and then we sold off quite sharply and notice that we closed below the 50-day moving average here for junk bond JNK. But over the past couple of uh, trading sessions, I think junk bonds uh, have uh, bottomed and I think now fresh highs are more likely than uh, continuation lower. Uh, I don't know if it has to do with oil, you know, there's a, about 15% of uh, oil producers that have, or rather, let me rephrase it, uh, about 15% of uh, junk bonds JNK holdings are from, you know, uh, oil producers with a rating of uh, below uh, investment grade, uh, in other words, junk. But uh, it's only 15% and there seems to be oil maybe stabilizing temporarily, so this could be uh, helping the junk bond market. Overall, I think we're still bullish. Uh, notice the uh, weekly time frame, all-time highs, and I don't see a tapping pattern. Um, I don't see an overt tapping pattern just yet. Here we had a you know, bearish engulfing in uh, October, November of last year, and then we moved lower, but then we found support. So again, I, I don't see a major uh, or even a minor tapping pattern for that matter. Here is um, the really interesting, uh, interesting point of uh, S&P 500 versus TLT. So what we do here is we take S&P 500 and you know, price of S&P 500 and simply divide it by price of TLT. So we uh, create a relative chart. When uh, this chart is moving higher, S&P 500 is outperforming. When this chart is moving lower, TLT is outperforming. Now, on average, notice that uh, TLT has been under uh, outperforming since March of this year. Notice that we tapped out here in this ratio chart and are moving lower. In other words, TLT or bonds, treasuries, very safe uh, kind of uh, security, very safe um, investment is uh, attracting investments and attracting uh, money inflow. So notice that this week uh, we outperformed stocks, TLT outperformed stocks, and last week TLT has outperformed stocks. So there is this general downward trend and especially if we take out this low from April and this is a relative chart so remember these are in relative uh, on a relative basis um, this could spell trouble for the stock market uh, at least in the near term I think longer term stock, stocks are pretty much firmly bullish but again um, I wonder if a strength in TLT is a signal that uh, stocks may be in some sort of a in, overdue for a correction, that's for sure. Uh, so TLT here on a daily time frame, uh, I'm long TLT um, and hopefully my Australian subscribers are also long. A lot of buying pressure, notice there's gaps, lots of gaps to the upside. So this is buying pressure, very clearly um, defined on this chart fresh 2017 highs this week and also we closed uh, this uh, big gap down from November. Now if I was a bond bear, uh, I'm no longer a bond bear, 
uh, I was bound bear maybe around here, around the beginning of 2017, but I think bonds have uh, definitely proven themselves. If I was a bond bear, I would look to short it around here because it looks like we are um, approaching the support break area. Uh, but so far, I just don't see a lot of selling here. Uh, and, you know, evidence is building. For example, here is the bullish cross, 50 days moving around uh, above 200 day, uh, that we are now not in the bear market for bonds. Here's a weekly time frame for TLT. Uh, looks like we held support here. And notice that the support likely held. This is, I did not change the sign. This, this was back from March and it's still there. So uh, support was held. Uh, we had a little bit of a retest here uh, in May and then we just continued higher. Uh, resistance that was formed by previous lows from uh, March and May of 2016. Uh, clearly was um, overcome and we're moving higher. So bonds are attracting investments and this could be a warning to stocks. Here's LQD, uh, another um, investment grade corporate bond fund. This one is even stronger. Notice the bullish cross here back in May and these are actually all-time highs. And notice again lots of gaps on this chart, in other words, presence of buying pressure. LQD here on the weekly time frame. Notice again that we hit fresh all time highs, and this is an adjusted chart. In other words, uh, it, this chart is adjusted for dividends. Um, bullish chart, and I showed this in the past, so uh, breakout above 2016 highs. Um, move to all-time highs, deep pullback, but notice where we have found support exactly at the breakout level and now we've moved higher to fresh highs. So this chart I had no problem with. Uh, TLT on the weekly time frame I had a bit of a problem with because these were indeed 52-week lows and I don't like when a security hits 52-week lows. It's uh, To me it's not a good sign. But overall, again, I think um, uh, stocks could be uh, setting up for some sort of a pullback finally, uh, especially since bonds are gaining. Okay, let's move on to the Forex universe. Uh, here's US dollar on the daily time frame. So, um, we had support break here in May and we moved lower. Uh, now, it looks like we're attempting to hold here, but we're having a hard time. Um, this chart does not inspire as much confidence as before the support break uh, in May. Uh, but again, this could still this could still change, and we could still find you know support here and rally. Uh, on the weekly time frame, the picture is a little more clear. This could still be a bullish chart. Uh, because we're at multi-year highs here in the beginning of the year. Right now we're basically retesting November 2016 lows. Uh, notice we're about the same price level right now. Now if we don't hold this November 2016 lows, then we could continue lower and uh, we may we could be by then we'll be approaching 52 week lows and that's not a good sign. Uh, for any security. But for now, um, we, we're we still kind of indecisive and um, it's still possible that we can just hold, hold support here and rally uh, to the upside. Um, I also looked at the euro itself and here's euro on the daily time frame and this chart looks quite nice. It looks, it, it looks positive and um, bullish. Notice there is a gap here, a very unusual, uh, rare gap. A, but the important thing is that this gap was not closed immediately and, we, and it euro continued to rally. And then we also had a bullish moving average cross here. So this could be like a flag. Um, so this is a flag handle and this is a flag uh, banner itself. Um, maybe we already retested the low of the flag and now we're gonna 
move higher from here, especially this Friday's candle is pretty good looking. Um, if this happens, of course, uh, Euro is a big part of the US dollar index and Euro could move higher. Uh, so maybe Euro has reversed and maybe now Euro is in a bull market. I, I, it's hard for me to say it right now, but um, notice the weekly uh, channel here. This is a 52 week channel. It's very close to 52 week highs. And um, here we had 52 week lows, but we found bottom, you know, bottom here, bottom, and then we rallied from here. So if we hit fresh 52 week highs, this would be quite positive for Euro and quite negative for the dollar. Uh, and then when we, when we get to gold, uh, it would be just excellent news if dollar uh, decides to continue lower. Uh, gold will certainly benefit from that. Okay, let's move on to gold and gold uh, I think had a decent week um, but let's look at the daily time frame first so notice this could possibly be a double top here 1297-1298 area moved back found support at the 200 day moving average I'm I, I don't you know, use uh, moving averages for trading per se. So, uh, like for example, I, I wouldn't necessarily say, "Oh, okay, we're gonna find support here that at the moving average." That means I'm going to be buying here. But to set the the tone, to set the general bias, it's still sometimes useful. In other words, do I want to be buying this chart or do I want to be shorting this chart? Um, but notice here that we had this basically big drop and. The 50-day moving average went below the 200. Um, but if you listen to my previous videos, even back here, I maintained that I'm I'm a gold bull. So how how do we reconcile that? And the reason is because I use my own um, gold breadth index, uh, which uh, takes into consideration a um, a bunch of a um, gold uh, market uh, gold miners uh, market breadth indicators and even though we had a bear cross here i still maintained the bullish bias for gold and i was looking to go long um, so maybe we have bottomed here and uh, maybe we have uh, you know maybe we have formed a hammer candlestick i mean ideally the close should have been a little bit higher but it's still not bad you know this could be already um, th this is this is showing that there was buyers present and notice that there was a, a big uh, shadow out of the bottom here for this candlestick and this shows that buyers did step in at least by the end of the week so this is good news um, can we still move lower absolutely um, especially if this double top plays out um, but I think we may need to re you know we, may, we, we we're still going to go higher and at least retest this double top and of course uh, I don't think there's such thing as triple top GDX uh, daily time frame same thing it kind of follows gold more volatile obviously uh, I am long gold miners right now um, on this chart, uh, basically there was just a lot of just big swings back and forth. Um, notice that this swing here in May put us below March low. Um, so you can also say that we're seeing a series of lower lows and lower highs. Um, that's one way of looking at it. Um, I am looking at it from a different perspective. I am looking at it from a point of view of uh, my market breadth index. And here it is gold market breadth index. Notice that we have hit uh, plus four and this is as high as it goes and we pulled back a little bit. But in any case, this is still a bull market and we started this bull market sometime in mid-March 2016. And even though we were having those big corrections, I still would not short it um, I would, I would, uh, I'm only playing it on the long side. 
Um, uh, a weekly time frame for GDX looks even better than for gold. Uh, notice there was a couple of very strong weekly candlesticks here. Uh, in fact, this week we had a strong weekly candlestick. Um, we had a, a close above the um, and uh, above the open uh, close was ne near the end of the session. Uh, well, in this case, near the end of the week on Friday, and uh, there's a relatively longish uh, shadow of the bottom uh, versus the shadow of the top. So this is a bullish candlestick similar to the one we had several weeks ago. So right now I'm thinking that we will go higher and possibly try to take out this uh, 2571, 2580 area to the upside. Uh, here is the uh, same uh, gold miners ETF GDX on a daily time frame. Uh, a couple of my proprietary indicators here, or actually three. Um, so, percent of stocks on the uh, um, buy signal for GDX, uh, another uh, raw data indicator for GBA, and uh, another, it's a um, breadth momentum oscillator basically. It's an oscillator of the advanced decline line. Uh, but I had to create them myself because they're not available for unstructures.com. So here what I wanted to show is that we have become oversold. Notice that this indicator is uh, was at zero a couple of uh, days ago. And notice that this indicator was in the red. So uh, actually this is showing uh, that we were oversold. And then notice that this indicator moved higher and the price itself moved higher as well. Now, I am, j just to be clear, I don't, nor I don't normally use indicators to trade. They are a secondary, um, they're kind of helpful. Because notice that, for example, right here, we also had and this indicator at zero back in November. So we were clearly oversold and we moved higher in this indicator, but notice that, we, that we, we broke even lower afterwards and we again became oversold and at zero. So um, there is no such thing as infallible indicator and I would not even recommend looking for it. There is always going to be a certain percentage of stocks, uh, a certain percentage of trades that will fail. Um, your job as a trader is to control the risk. And since you know a certain percentage of, st of trades will fail, uh, you should uh, treat pretty much every single trade as a failure. This way, you will always control your risk because you are not, well, if you sign up for MassachusettsTrading.com, I have a whole section dedicated to risk control. And I'll uh, also provide. I also provide um, Excel calculator how to size your positions accordingly. Because every time I send a alert out, I also send a uh, how much am I? Uh, you know how much I'm. Uh, I'm recommending to buy uh, for the uh, size. You know sample um, uh, trading account. So in any case, uh, I, I diverge. But in any case. Um, I think this is a bullish chart again and looks like we are moving in the uh, right direction. Um, but uh, you know, anything is possible and again, no indicator is infallible and we could still uh, continue lower from here. Okay, let's move on to hard commodities. So here is uh, West Texas Intermediate, light crude oil on a weekly time frame first. Um, Throughout 2016, uh, if you listen to my previous videos, I pretty much maintained the same point of view and I maintained that this relatively large substantial rebound from 20 whatever 6 to 55 dollars, it pretty much doubled here. Um, I still maintained that this is a uh, counter trend advance. In other words, the trend for oil is down. And this is a major uh, trend, in other words, uh, longer term. I think we had this consolidation here basically in uh, November through March of 2017, from November 2016 through March 2017. 
very tight consolidation. Finally, we broke this consolidation to the downside, had a small bounce, had another even lower low, another small bounce, and then another lower low. So this week we put in a fresh lower low, and we actually took out November lows because notice that we had uh, this week's low was at 42.05. Uh, that means we closed well. We had the low below uh, November lows of last year. So uh, you know uh, we are at MassChestTrading.com again. We are short um, oil. I am short personally as well. Um, this is a. Uh, quite bearish I think uh, we could take out well ready to call took out November lows if we take out this low from uh, last August I think this could be uh, we could see a collapse similar to what we saw in 2015 on daily time frame a little bit more uh, involved and a little bit more uh, zoomed in you can see we had uh, two inside days in a row and I love inside days this is showing a consolidation and this is a clear consolidation like you can draw all kinds of triangles and flags but here it's very straightforward you you will you cannot say anything else I think you can say that okay yes definitely we had a uh, big range here three days ago we had a range that was inside that uh, yesterday, the day before yesterday, and yesterday we had another very narrow range which was inside the day before yesterday range. So it is clearly a triangle consolidation. Now, this is a downtrend in security, and if you know, um, normally uh, triangle consolidations are continuation patterns. So since this is a uh, downtrend in security, we can say that we, we should expect a lower price ahead. In other words, if we break up, break down out of this consolidation, and of course, uh, we will expect uh, lower prices, significantly lower prices. Um, I'm guessing at the very least, we should retest the support to here at uh, 39.79, but uh, possibly even lower. And let me see i'm going to take a look at pivot points see if they tell me anything so the next pivot point is at uh, 35 dollars but again i think we need to first take out last august lows and we have not done that yet energy xle approaching 52 we close and uh, i pointed this one out uh, repeatedly zoom out a little bit um, now it's very similar patterns here XLE in the upper part here oil and down in the lower part here in uh, 2015 um, uh, May June July oil kind of traded sideways finally it broke down but notice that XLE was just kept dropping and then eventually just collapsed to the, towards the 52 week lows uh, back then it's like an almost identical pattern here notice that oil uh, oil has been trading sideways here and just from December till May of this year before finally starting to drop but the energy stocks have been trading just steadily down uh, the entire year and uh, we're now approaching 52 week close for XLE other ETF XLP already at 52 week close XES already at 52 week low and of course the biggest of them all Exxon Mobil itself 52 week close as well uh, just a few weeks ago so overall I think it's pretty you know this paints a picture to me of a bearish security and XLE um, I would not be buying it right now uh, interesting uh, usually stocks correlate strongly to other stocks especially stock funds correlate strongly to other stock funds so S&P 500 here in the upper part and a bunch of correlation coefficients so you can see consumer uh, cyclicals financials technology healthcare uh, staples uh, basic materials energy and utilities and for the for good measure I threw in um, international stocks as well 
Now, notice that by and large, um, stock funds correlate highly to the general market. Utilities a little bit, sometimes they go negative, but again, by and large, they correlate highly to the general market. And all other stock funds more or less correlate strongly to the general market as well. Now here I wanted to zoom in a little bit more and uh, I wanted to show same chart uh, basically and correlation coefficients for various uh, least correlated funds. So staples, energy, utilities and real estate. Again, staples, utilities, real estate, more or less, they correlate strongly to the general market. Now here's what's interesting. Energy has been pretty much correlating very strongly to the general market until recently. And notice that energy is currently strongly negatively correlated to the general market. This has never happened before. Throughout the entire history of this ETF, energy, you know, you can see the same thing here on this chart from 2001. This chart goes back to 2000, so more or less same thing. Energy more or less correlates strongly to the general market, but it has never been this negative. Now, my idea about this is that um, oil as an energy source is still important, but it is losing its relevance, uh, especially because there is just so much oil. And again, American producers with fracking and shale oil are just outproducing pretty much anybody in the world. And they're cutting costs and they're improving and streamlining their operations and there's still plenty of room for at which price, price levels energy producers can be profitable. So I think energy, American energy producers are, you know, basically the best in the world. And not just because I love America, but because I think they are literally the best. Um, whatever Saudi Arabia was doing back, um, you know, here clearly clearly backfired, and now, um, you know, and American producers were able to uh, consolidate, and they're able to uh, get oil out of the uh, ground at lower prices. So I wonder what's happening there, and notice I put in another one here for solar ten. I think this one is becoming more and more relevant to the uh, general market and maybe 10 will become, um, you know, solar energy pro producers will become more and more relevant and more and more important in the, um, in the years ahead. And uh, let's look at natural gas. Uh, this is a daily time frame continuous contract. Um, last week here we had a very big gap uh, in you know big gap down here in the price uh, and then moved lower below previous lows uh, I'm not sure if this changes uh, the picture significantly I still think that this is a bullish chart just we had a very deep correction a rally and now we're seeing a similar relatively deep correction Natural gas is super volatile, and I always tell my subscribers the same thing. Um, commodities are very volatile, and they're more difficult to trade, in my opinion. So allocate smaller positions to commodities, and especially natural gas. This thing is completely wild sometimes. I mean, look at this enormous gaps and, and moves lower. And the opposite is also true. Sometimes it just pops higher. Um, so right now, I still think this is a bullish chart, uh, mainly because of the longer term weekly time frame. Uh, we had a breakout, fresh 52 archives, throwback, fresh 52 archives, another throwback, another 52 archives, another throwback. So now it's possible we're tracing out sort of like a head and shoulders pattern. But this head and shoulders pattern will not be complete until the, you know, the neckline is broken. Neckline is somewhere around $2.60, $2.50. If we close below there, I think we're definitely going to be in a bear market. and We could continue lower. But for now, I still think that we could, you know, pull out of this and, you know, find support here and continue higher. Um, I, 
I, me, we're, we're, we're trading Massachusetts trading. Um, we are trading a national yes on the long side right now. All right, uh, that's it for this week's recap. Uh, please hit the like button below. Um, if you have any comments, uh, then comment below as well. And of course, share this video and this post with others who may benefit from it. Please stay tuned on how to find us on the internet. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I wanted to introduce you to my service. Uh, please go to masterchastrain.com and then uh, click on Trade Alert Services. So right now I'm introducing a 6 months and a 12 months membership so you get a nice discount uh, towards the versus the monthly membership uh, option. So when you sign up uh, you get lots of members only content. Of course there is lots of videos you see my open positions and the recent recommendations uh, or other recent alerts of what was sent out. Uh, there is also a bunch of actionable ideas that you can take a look at. Uh, I'm, uh, very important is uh, risk control uh, in my trading and risk control uh, is achieved by uh, sizing your position appropriately. So. Uh, I have an Excel spreadsheet that you can download for free that you could use to size your positions. And I usually, when I send an alert out, then I usually include the sample position uh, size in the, um, in the alert itself. Uh, of course, you get several videos on risk controls, uh, and these are extremely important, I think, uh, to basically survival as a trader. Uh, there are several videos on trading selection, uh, selection of the securities to trade, and some general ideas on trading. There's also a bunch of videos on psychology of trading that are also quite important because it is important to keep your mind in the right place as this is quite a stressful endeavor. I also have another section here um, that has to do with trend identification because my subscribers asked me repeatedly if I want if I could record a um, uh, videos to help them identify the trend which way is are they should be selling they should they be buying the chart should they be shorting this chart and so I recorded a bunch of videos uh, to help you identify the trends uh, also, a couple of other videos uh, to help you uh, lower your risk and uh, identify less volatile funds. There's also a section on foreign stock opportunities um, within the um, uh, daily email and the daily um, uh, blog post. Uh, dividend aristocrat stocks, we also trade them, uh, but they are traded on a longer term time frame and you could uh, simply uh, it's almost like a buy and hold, but in the sense of um, with a you know you can find a good opportunity in an uptrend in a high quality dividend aristocrat dividend payer stocks. So um, also uh, on daily on daily basis, I provide an email uh, and uh, market recap, but on weekly basis, uh, I also provide a members only email that uh, describes my positions and describes the recent alerts and the recent um, dividend aristocrat changes as well. So uh, give, it, give it a chance, sign up for three weeks with a free trial uh, with every single membership. If you already signed up then, then you can renew here at uh, also uh, decent prices uh, for six months, 12 months and monthly membership. All right, uh, thanks for listening and uh, I'll hope to see you as a, in the membership section soon.